He and Tom and I spent most of our wild and reckless youth exploring that island. Lots of caves, lots of adventure, if you know where to look. To all drivers awaiting your car, please stay on the sidewalk until your car arrives at the boarding area. Guess who? <laughs> yup. Just called to tell you I still don't know why I called. But I'm thinking about it. When the crypt doors creak and the tombstones quake. Spooks come out for a swing and wake. Happy haunts materialize. And begin to vocalize. Grim grinning grin ghosts come out to socialize. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, get ready to meet all your favorite Disney stars as the Magic Kingdom proudly presents W Radio, your information station. Hello, my friend, and welcome to the WW Radio Show, your Walt Disney World information station. I am your host, Lou Mangiello, and this is show number 649, and together we'll celebrate the magic of the Disney parks, movies, and more here on the podcast, my weekly live video on Facebook, community, books, audio tours, blog, and much more. Please be sure to subscribe to the podcast and find everything else at www.radio.com. So this week, we're going to recap and review our cruise on the Disney dream, including what's new, what's different, what to expect and everything you need to know. I'll then have our Disney trivia question of the week and more updates at the end of the show. So sit back, relax, and enjoy this week's episode of the WW Radio Show. For the first time in forever, or so it seems, as really it was March 2020, the Disney Dream set sail from Port Canaveral once again. And on August 27th, I boarded the ship once again, maybe with just a little tear or tears of joy in my eyes, in order to share, review, and really bring the experience to you as you maybe think about taking your next or your first cruise on Disney Cruise Line. And of course, I could not do it alone Literally, without the help of Mouse Fan Travel, and more specifically, Becky Mankin, not only because they booked the cruise for me, but Becky joined me back on board so that we could experience and share it together with you and for you. So this week, she and I are going to take you through the entire process and the entire ship, literally and figuratively, from stem to stern. And so I want to welcome back the only person that I trust to book my and your vacations and also share a meal with me at Palo. She is, of course, Becky Mankin from MEI and Mouse Fan Travel. There's absolutely no way I could have let you do that alone because it was you and I unsupervised on a cruise ship and what could possibly go wrong? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> nothing. Well, exactly. We should start by saying nothing went wrong. <laughs> nothing I know. Went wrong. It, it was absolutely <laughs> a, uh, a a wonderful cruise. And Becky, before we get into the meat and mm, potatoes, before we get into the meat and <laughs> potatoes, of it, there's a couple of things I want to preface this by saying and really sort of get out of the way number one first and foremost this was not a media cruise this was not a an invitation by disney we paid full rack rate price for the cabins as well as everything on board yep. specifically so that we could bring you the full actual guest experience as guests in that same vein throughout the entire process, um, especially from the time we arrived at the port to the time that we disembarked, we were able to share a lot of that with you via live video on Facebook, as well as through Instagram stories and photos. And I specifically wanted to do it that way, not just because I love live video and the dynamic that it brings, but because it was really important to me that you see it for yourself, unedited, unscripted, completely live, exactly as it is for every guest, so that you can judge for yourself if and when you are ready to come back to cruising. And that's, again, part of the reason why I like the live video so much is because it is unfiltered. You are seeing what I am seeing exactly as, it's ha as, as it is happening. More importantly, 
we were able to address and answer and show you some of the things that you wanted to see while we were on board. Um, with all that in mind, uh, we are going to talk about what is new, what is slash was different, because we also have to acknowledge, Becky, that this is a very, very fluid and dynamic experience. And what we encountered on board, lo, just those couple of weeks ago, is already, forget about likely going to be different, it's already different than what you are going to encounter today, tomorrow, certainly a few weeks or months from now. But we're going to discuss some of those important, sometimes positive, changes that took place literally as we got on and off the ship because we really want to give you a good sense of exactly what cruising like is now, where we think it's going, what's changed, and et cetera. Yeah, and change. The travel industry as a whole right now is full of change. What are the protocols today will be different tomorrow. So it's really important that you stay on top of, of what uh, what the protocols are, that you, uh, the destination you're going to. And th- this is a great example because one of the things that we encountered on our cruise actually made me feel a little uncomfortable. But since we came back, they've changed the protocol and it's completely different and it's safe to me again. So uh, part of that is the testing, which we'll talk about in a second as well. But yeah, it's all and, about change. And, yeah. And, and and I think it's really important, Becky, too, that we we start by when we talk about the cruise process, it does not begin when you arrive at the port. Uh, and I think that we really should sort of start at the very, very beginning as you are starting to think about booking and how even the booking process and the pre-cruise online process is different, I actually think improved. First and foremost, as a very quick aside, now is the time, now is the, wow, there are, I looked again (laughs) earlier this morning, there there are some amazing deals on cruises. I'm literally thinking of going back again because the rates are so low. Right now, you can do, and subject to change, check me with your law, three-night Halloween on the high seas is $1,400 for two people, if I'm if I'm doing my math correctly, it's about seven hundred dollars per person. I spend that much in food in three days alone, <laughs> so it's worth it for me for the late night chicken tenders. If you know, you know, like crazy good deals. Yeah, that's crazy. That those are really low rates for for Disney Cruise Line for sure, and if only they there are was somebody. Somebody Anybody who could who book it for you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> go figure. I'm not even going to like sound exasperated at that for a second. I do know right now they are uh, rolling out some offers, up, save up to 25% on select sailings from Port Canaveral. Uh, and that's primarily over the late fall. So I do see dates anywhere from September 17th into uh, the beginning to the actually to the beginning of November. So they are now trying to uh, to fill some of that space that they held back because they are increasing the capacity ever so slightly, which is great to see. Uh, obviously, what we s- sailed on was between all the cruises I've been on this uh, past the past couple of months have been between 30 and 40% capacity, which made it really feel like the ship was all to us, which was especially great on Castaway Key. But um, knowing that these rates are coming down, they're encouraging people to book once again, which is a great sign. Yeah. So let's talk about the booking process and and how things are different online and certainly what the what the current and to be clear the current covid right. protocols are the online booking process and i actually highly recommend not just because becky's here especially now more than ever having a disney travel agent is really really beneficial because there are a lot of changes a lot of new protocols a lot of sort of things to wade through notwithstanding that um the the booking process itself whether you go through the site or go through your agency is relatively the same, but what really starts to change, and again, opportunity from adversity, I think some of the really good positive changes is when you go through your pre-arrival questionnaire, etc., online, you are now immediately given 
via email, via the website, and if you have, I believe, an Apple, both and, and, and a Google device, you can add sort of your, your pre-arrival booking form that you used to have to print out and sign and bring with you and take out of the terminal. It now is part of either your Apple wallet or your Google wallet, and that QR code that you're given is sort of like your magic key entry point that helps you get in and through a lot of the processes, both before you board and then as you start to board. Yep, absolutely. And the one thing I do want to point out is even if you're a Castaway Club member and you have been on 20 cruises, pretend for a moment you've never cruised before because you have to come at this with a whole different outlook uh, because the steps are so different. And when you go through the booking process, that's about the same. You you know, get the app, you have all of the access to your online check-in process, but there's a lot that's different. And if you're just kind of assuming, ah, it's going to be the same, you get your boarding time, you get your QR code, you're ready to go. You're missing a lot of things that if you don't complete them, which we'll talk about in a second, you could actually be turned away from boarding. So it's really important to pay close attention to all the steps. Yeah. And and I will say that the site because whenever I do this, Becky, I always try and go through with the mindset as if I've never cruised before and I have never sort of seen this before, making just trying to understand how clear it is. I think they do a really good job of stepping you through the processes, especially now with the added requirements. Uh, again, as we record today in mid September 2021, where the COVID protocols currently are, and this is not anything political whatsoever this just is what it is Mm -hmm. every guest needs to be vaccinated with asterisk every guest 12 years of age of older are required to be vaccinated in order to get on the ship that is what it is if you are 11 or younger you have to have proof of a negative pcr test between three days and 24 hours because you're not obviously required to be vaccinated Correct. And for those of you who are, again, it is what it is, 12 years and older, there's no exceptions to those rules. You have to be vaccinated and you have to be willing to show the proof of vaccination when you arrive at the port as well. You can't take a picture of it. You have to actually have the actual vaccination card, which you also upload when you start using their safe passage process, which is the second part to your online registration. Right. And again, being dynamic and fluid, this might change tomorrow. Mm-hmm. God willing, it changes and it all just disappears and goes away <laughs> That'd be next nice. week. It should only happen. <laughs> um, but that's sort of where things are. And again, that was different from where when we got there and there was, uh, there were the, not just the, the process when you first got there, you, it used to be where you would just sort of, if you, if you drove yourself, you would park in the garage and then sort of start the process. Now the process begins as you enter the garage. You need to start showing that code. They sort of confirm the status of everybody who is in the vehicle. They scan everybody's codes and sort of step you through the process. Now that everybody has to be vaccinated, even that is going to be more efficient. And you can only arrive at the port. This is very different. Right. Because I am the kind of guy, I am who I am, I unapologize. I am the guy that gets to the airport three hours early. For a cruise, if I could sleep in the car the night before, to be like I would, because I'm just so excited. Now you are given a very specific port arrival time. It is very, very strictly enforced. So even if you try and get there five, ten minutes before your arrival time, you will be turned away. You will not even be allowed to park and sort of just mill about the parking lot, you have to arrive within the window that you are given. Obviously, if you're arriving uh, via Disney transportation, it you'll sort of have that set time to board and arrive. But if you are driving yourself or coming via, you know, uh, Uber or a system like that, taxi, cab, whatever it is, you have to arrive during your window. Yeah. And they, like you said, they are strict about that because they're trying to make sure that they don't overcrowd any of the areas. And there are several steps to the process that you have to go through. I, I think you and I kind of looked at each other when they started asking for the code. And uh, when we entered the garage, that became, I guess I was anticipating as we would, we would show what our 
time was supposed to be. We'd park and then go in and start the process. It starts from the moment you arrive. So if you're driving yourself, you offload your bags to the porter, right, Lou? You offload mm-hmm. the bags to the porter and then you go to the, the parking garage and you start right there to show them that you're vaccinated or not or your status from the Safe Passage application. Yeah, and your QR code is sort of like your key to the world card before you get your key to the world card because as you start that process and you go, there's there's almost sort of a series of mini check-in kiosks that you go to that step you through that even before you get to the security screening area, they scan your passport, they scan your QR code um, in order to get in, then you get your key to the world card when you get in. But Becky, we went from car door to atrium in about 25 minutes yeah it was crazy fast um we even had we had some time to take a couple of pictures in the terminal there's not a lot to do in there there's no food there's nothing to see there's a there's a model of a ship and you're excited but we got on very 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 quickly yeah that's the benefit of people arriving on their at their time, because there's no waiting. You basically go through each step progressively without having to wait for the next step. And so by the time you're through and and ready to board the ship, it's ready for boarding. And it really was smooth and efficient once I think once you and I figured it out because <laughs> there were a couple of places that you know being veteran cruisers we're used to doing things in a certain way and to turn the corner and find out oh wait a minute so this is where we have to show our passport when those kiosks are downstairs in front of security where before we went through security and then you would check in for the cruise here you actually did it the opposite way which was like okay wait a minute now I have to stop and get stuff out of my bag because I wasn't ready for that. Uh, but it it really is a smooth process. And I think it's going to be better overall, even post COVID. Yeah. And these are things that I think they started to implement during COVID and possibly not even because of they upgraded the port a little bit. And I think these are some of what they brought in and it just happened to sort of coincide with the process. But again, something that I hope and expect to remain is just how easy and fast and not crowded like there was never anybody sort of uh, uh, even kind of around us other than when you're on sort of the gangway to get into the atrium and they welcome you as they do you know welcome Lou Mangello, the Mankin party whatever it might be however even this too is slightly different because you when your name is called you are escorted by a crew member into the atrium where normally everybody is just sort of milling about and and hanging. But now there are these, and you'll see these throughout the ship, there are these large dots on the atrium carpet, probably about 10 or so. When those dots are are filled, Mickey and Minnie are on the atrium stairs. They're waving. There's music playing for just maybe a couple of minutes. And then again, a crew member will escort you to the stairs, the elevator, directing you to wherever it is that you want to go, and they bring in another group of 10. It's very fast. It's very efficient. And you still get that, and and this is going to be the, the recurring, you know, that, that sort of appear and wave. You're going to get to see the characters, wave, take some pictures, and then move on to your next destination, which for me is always Cabanas. <laughs> of course it is. I think that was the first thing out of your mouth. Where's lunch? <laughs> no, I know exactly where right. lunch. Certain things don't change. I know exactly where lunch was going to be. I do want to back up really quickly before we, we embark more on the ship, just to point out the fact that at this time, again, as of today, they did make a change since you and I sailed, where before, and, and again, that was something that, that I was kind of... Eh, iffy about was the fact that they didn't test everybody. If you were vaccinated, they said, okay, you're vaccinated. Don't need to test you. You go ahead and go on board, which some of the other cruise lines are actually testing either one to three days beforehand or at the port. And I'm really happy that right after our sailing, they did implement that. So every single sailor, whether vaccinated or not, you're going to get another test Uh, before you board the ship, like at the port and at Disney's expense. So this is where a lot of confusion comes in for for folks. And again, this is as of today. If you are under age 12, you're going to have to test before you go between one to three days, and then they will test you again at the port. If you are uh, 
12 and up and vaccinated, which you have to be right now for certain reasons, they're going to not require you the pretest, but you have to test at the port. And again, at Disney's expense, there is one um, situation where that's a little bit different. And that's on the Panama Canal sailing, which they are requiring everybody to be vaccinated. So at this time, they're only allowing 12 and up to actually sail on that itinerary. And we might see that more. And that's not Disney's um, requirement, by the way, it's because of the different ports that they're stopping in are actually like the Bahamas are actually requiring people to be vaccinated to stop at those locations. So it's it's ebb and flow from the different cruise lines reacting to the different countries that are putting in these rules. And as the testing process goes at the port right outside of the parking garage, there are four large air conditioned white tents. And from what I understand, You will go in, you'll do a quick nasal swab, you go to a waiting area where there are a number of TVs that show you when you are okayed, when you see your info, you get the safe package passage login, and then you're able to head over to the terminal and make your way in. I have spoken to people who have done it. They said it was very easy. It was very simple. It was also very fast. So it didn't necessarily slow down the process uh, anymore. Again, assuming that... You, you pass your tests. And- yeah, exactly. <laughs> and and don't worry for those of you who haven't had a COVID test. I think I've had like 30 at this point with all the things that I had to go through, but um, it's not a brain tickler. They're not going to shove a huge pr- prog up your nose. It's just a really simple swab on the very inside of your nostril. So don't be afraid if that's something that kind of makes you a little skittish. Yeah. Um, and one thing to say too, it, I mentioned this very quickly early and I, I want to sort of say it as we start to literally and figuratively bored is that after you've gone through the online, the, the regular process online of checking in, going through all your documents, arranging your dining, doing anything else that you wanted to do now more than ever, your very recently updated and very, very nice Disney cruise line app is very much your friend. Um, it is very much an integral part of your entire, not just boarding experience, but your onboard experience as well. Um, And we'll talk about how it it very much plays into your cruise experience, which can be a pro or con as somebody who, you know, and I'm going way, way back. I'm going to show how old I am. I used to love cruising (laughs) because I'd get on board. I'd throw my phone in the safe and I would never see it again because you were disconnected and you had to be disconnected. And that forcible disconnection was something I I cherished. Now it's a new world. I get it. Yeah. Your phone is very much part of the experience. And honestly, Becky, it's an enhancement to your experience on board. And I think we'll continue to even be so as we start to later on predict a little bit of, uh, of what I think is going to change. But you are very much as much or as little as you want to be tied to your phone. And what I mean by that is. Now the, and look, we all loved getting that paper navigator in our hands and just sitting down and reading it or highlighting it. Your navigator is now on the app. It's very fast. It's very easy to na- navigate. Uh, <laughs> and um, and I found it to be very helpful because one thing that a, a paper navigator couldn't do, and your navigator, by the way, if you've never cruised before, was a multi-page full color document that showed you where everything was from dining to entertainment to mustard drills to snacks and and things that you could do on board. Now that's all part of your app. And even like as, as you're getting on board, you can start going through the itinerary for the day or the week and start favoriting the things in, that you want to do and see. And you can get push notifications from your phone. So you get these 15 minute reminders. Hey, don't forget to go to the D lounge to play match your mate, whatever it might be. Hey, Lou, don't forget your Apollo reservation starts in 15 Ex- minutes again. Fact, exactly. Right? <laughs> the really ice cream store it. opens now. Yeah, yeah, it was amazing. I really, really liked how well the app worked and just how much information was on there. More importantly, Becky, the addition of uh, the ability to contact a crew member. So now- My favorite. Yeah, you now need to have- it when, and. Let me sort of get to the punchline. You need to have an appointment to go to guest relations. Why? They don't want 100 people standing in a queue trying to get to guest relations. And you don't necessarily need it because you can reach a live crew member 
via live chat, which I think is like, it's like, duh, it makes so much perfect it sense. Does. And it works so well, too. I loved the chat feature. At first, it was like, oh, great. OK, I'm fourth in line and I have to wait. But then again, all of a sudden, a happy crew member comes on and says, how can I be of, of help? And I'm like, I need a spa appointment. And they were able to make the appointment for me. They were able to ask answer questions. I wanted to ask if, because uh, I had forgotten, as I'm, you know, the worst at my own travel planning, but great at everybody else's, I had forgotten if I'd added prepaid gratuities or not. And I just asked the question and they said, yes, you did. Everything is fine. So instead of having to break up my enjoyment of my cruise and having to, you know, wander down to deck three and stand in line to ask a question, I'm actually able to still sit poolside, pull up my app, ask the question by a chat, get an answer and not have to be disturbed. And while, you know, I, I think we're all in that space of, yeah, there was a time where we just threw the phone away. We couldn't be contacted unless you wanted to pay $24.95 for um, ship to <laughs> see, you know, uh, ground to sea uh, phone services. I guess I'm kind of over that at this point. I'm so used to having my phone as my camera. I'm used to uh, using the phone capabilities for everything besides just looking at email. I mean, just don't open the email app and, and you're and you're golden. But at this point, there's so much benefit to having it in your hand and being able to view your bill. If you're not sure if something came through correctly, you could easily do that. Uh, one of the things that we used it for too, that they're heavily pushing is to use QR codes to pull up menus. So you can actually see the the restaurant menus on the app rather than have everybody hold on to menus that we're all passing around, which I think is kind of brilliant. I do miss holding that menu sometimes. I'll, I'll be honest going through it. But if I wasn't sure if I wanted to go to the main dining room or go up and have fish and chips, um, I could look at the menus beforehand right from the my phone and made it so easy to access the information that I needed. And I think that's something that will remain for those guests that want it. And at some point when we come back to having, you know, physical menus again, you will have that option which is the beauty mm -hmm. of it. You're not going to be forced into anything one way or another. You've got Can me excited about dining, but I'm gonna, there's a couple of things I want to get to first <laughs> because I think one of the best, what, what has always been a required re a requirement that was also a guest dissatisfier because it almost, it was such an interruption of the, of the embarkation day is the muster drill. Yeah. Like, uh, yes. Lunch. All right. We can't do anything because you got to get ready, kids. Go put your, get your. Stop everything off. you're doing. Stop Everything's going to close down. Right. We go, need to stand, go stand in, in line and walk up the stairs and down the stairs and then rush. Now, all of a sudden, they've solved the mustard drill problem because all you need to do is take your body and take your app, appear at your muster station when it's convenient for you during a certain window of time. Show your QR code, Yahtzee. You're done. Yep. Like five minutes in and out. It was <laughs> so such fantastic. a pleasure. Instead of what really, Becky, was sometimes, you know, an hour plus of your time and then this huge cattle herd of people trying to get up to deck 11 for the sail away party. It is this thing that you do when you're ready to do it and then you're done. And, I was, and yep. it, it gave you that first day back again. It's the best thing the cruise lines and across the board, most cruise lines are heading to this e-muster and it's working so well and they don't have to close everything down. They don't have to, to herd everybody and make sure they're all out there and standing, you know, shoulder to shoulder with people you haven't met yet. And in the middle of the, out in the sun in some areas where it's 105 degrees and the sun is beating down on you for 20 minutes while you listen to, to the drill information, it's efficient it's, it gives us the information we need. We know where we need to go for if there is an issue because we have to go to the muster station so we are aware of where it is. You have cast members there to answer questions if there's anything that you need to, to know. If you would never put on a life jacket before, they will show you how to do it. Um, it just starts that whole vacation off in such a positive way. You go, you do what you need to do, but then you can continue on with your vacation without having an hour out of your time. Yeah, and, and look, we have a lot to get to, so I want to sort of move through a couple of these things relatively quickly. 
the only thing I really want to mention about the state rooms is is two things. One, instead of being handed your key to the world card when you check in in the in the ter- port terminal, it now is waiting for you outside your room, sort of in your little fishy clip or your seahorse clip outside. It is sealed for your protection, so nobody can take it. And then your state room, not much has changed, obviously, other than there are. Um, some explainer sheets showing how everything in the stateroom has been cleaned, has been sanitized, uh, sort of a little bit more about the sanitation protocols that are taking place, but not very much has changed in and around the staterooms themselves. Right. Just, I would say that the key to the room, the room key is the only thing that really has changed. Yeah. All right. Let's move on to the, the oh, so very delicious elephant in the room, which is dining. <laughs> Uh, because there have been some changes, and again, a lot of these things, Becky, are not necessarily going to change. One thing that we noticed outside of Cabanas uh, on the aft part of the ship as you come up to Deck 11, where there's the seagull there by the elevators, there are new hand-washing stations there. So in addition to using either the hand sanitizer and or a hand sanitizer, uh, like a, a sanitizing um, wipe, there are brand new, very pretty, actually, hand sanitizing stations in there. Uh, as long as we're at Cabanas, we'll stay at Cabanas, which is honestly like it's one of my favorite places to eat on board the ship. It is different in really two ways currently. One, you obviously cannot serve yourself. There are crew members there to serve you. Also, we noticed at breakfast, I didn't get to go back for, for lunch or dinner, but the number of options at the stations is very limited. So yeah, um, certain things that you might have expected to see and having 47 different breakfast options, not necessarily there. Corned beef hash, how I missed you so, but it's fine. I was on board. <laughs> I didn't really care. That being said, this is we we you have to go in understanding that it's a temporary thing. There was still a different breakfast item of the day. One day there was like breakfast burritos. One day there was something else. It was uh, like eggs Benedict or whatever. So it, it's different in that regard. But it is something that specifically to Cabanas, while it's limited in that regard, and obviously in Cabanas as well as all of the beverage stations, there's a cast member there getting a drink for you and then putting it down on a table. Yeah. And this is one of the changes that we're seeing across the cruise lines, uh, mainly that they're going to serve you because they don't want everybody touching all the tongs and, and you know, rummaging through things. So it's it's the way to do it to keep people healthy. Um, I would suggest, though, for people who do want that variety of choice to maybe go to the main dining rooms for breakfast if, if they're looking for something specific and, and check the, the menus there. Um, I did notice that there was quite a few things that I'm kind of used to just grabbing and going. We're not there. So if you have time and I, and I did kind of feel that where they were kind, kind of um, pushing us to kind of go to the main dining room. And I think that is because that keeps people apart and separate and at their own tables and then the servers can uh can stay um safe too so i i kind of missed being able to just grab anything i wanted up there but then again they're doing it the way they need to and i think the hard the harder thing for me to get used to was that the water stations the coffee stations you did have to wait in line at times because there were a lot of people trying to get coffee all of that is served to you and that also includes those beverage stations on deck up on um outside by the pools right and even uh, up on deck 11 so let's talk about things like so the quick service so for flows v8 cafe that has those four different stations in it they have these designated pathways that you sort of have to follow that with with stanchions so that you're not sort of gathering in front and loitering and waiting and there's a crew member there to help you sort of along your way even places like ice cream the the monsters inc themed ice cream station there is somebody there serving you your your cone placing it on a table in sort of a little holder and then you can pick it up so that the, there's no sort of physical touching of crew member to guest as well as to guest to some of the serving stations themselves. One of the most notable places that we see, you really see the change is inside the dining rooms themselves. And a couple of things that I noticed was one, there are if there's obviously there's there's two different dining times. There's a first and there's a second seating. 
but they did have a staggered arrival time. So rather than everybody showing up at 5.30 or 5.45, I think they spaced them out about 10 minutes each, like 5.30, mm-hmm. 5.40, 5.50, so that everybody's not gathering in front of the entrance to Royal Palace sort of on top of each other. When you go inside, you may you almost may or may not notice it. In certain restaurants, Becky, I think I noticed it more. There are less tables inside, right. and they are physically distanced from one another. And if you are not, and unlike past cruises so for example if becky and i were cruising together there would most likely be another party at our table that is not the case so you have the table to yourself and then sometimes there's even a table in between you and the next party this is going to change as we go from 30 to 40 percent to 50 60 and then eventually back up to 100 but in terms of as a as a as a diner as a guest one, what you notice and how you feel, you don't have to have any concern about being in, in a room if you've cruised before and there's being a lot more tables. There's a lot of dis- distance from one table to the next. Yeah, absolutely. And I noticed that they did set up a lot more two tops and four tops. They did have some six tops there, but you could tell that that was for the next dining because they only seated maybe two people at those six tops. So you could tell too, that they have removed a lot of tables um, because it just didn't feel as, as crowded as it would normally feel. And there was definitely that, that comfort of that social distancing between the tables. One thing I will say is if you're traveling with other people, make sure that you connect your reservations because they're not going to allow you just to sit, just to go over, Hey, well, my friends are here. So I'm just going to sit here. You actually do have to make sure that your conference referenced beforehand, because they want to make sure that those parties traveling together are actually together. And the only one other Notable thing I think we should mention about dining is my favorite and yours, Paulo. Paulo has changed a little bit. One, it's the only place that they offered you a physical menu. However, it is, it's interesting. It was a one paper menu per table, and then they take them and dispose of them. Mm-hmm. Like you couldn't actually take them. And, you know, I sometimes like to keep things as little souvenirs. They gave you a, mem- a menu if you wanted to look at it and not just use the app and then dispose it. One other thing that has changed, and this sort of got buried amongst all the other things, is that now there is an option for choosing for a prefix menu, which is $45, which includes four courses from a select menu, or you can order individual items a la carte. One thing that you'll notice is now there are prices next to those a la carte items. <laughs> dun, so, dun, dun. Yeah, so this is, this is sort of how what it really ends up looking like. If you are a platinum castaway club member, which is what Becky 11 cruises or above 10 and above 10 10 and above you part of being a platinum castaway club member is that you have access to Apollo one time on your cruise, which basically absorbs that $45. But if you do want to dine, you have the choice of either that $45 prefix limited menu or the individual items. This is not how it has been in the past where you used to pay, I guess it was maybe $45, $50 or so, and could order anything off of the menu. It It is a change. It is an additional expense. It is not unlike other cruise lines in the industry. Let's sort of just be honest where... There is a higher-end restaurant that does have an additional cost associated with it. Um, you have to now sort of make that decision, you know, is the Apollo experience or the Remy experience, for that matter, something that you decide that you want to do? Apollo brunch is one of my favorite meals anywhere on the planet. Obviously, brunch on the ship is also different because there are now no longer tables that you can go up to. I'm starting to literally get choked up as I think the buffet. About it. <laughs> I know right? the buffet of, of both hot and cold items is, is gone. Now what they do is you have a menu to choose from. So if you like the meats and cheeses, there is a meat and cheese option that they will bring out. There is a cold seafood option, all of which you can replenish over and over and over again. Or as we did, Becky, well, I'd like a little bit more of, the cheese with balsamic vinegar, I'd like a little bit more of the shrimp 
but there's nothing to go up to. Your server has to bring it for you. Right. And I, I do want to point out that these are two different ways of handling it. So what you mentioned about the a la carte prices are for dinner. The brunch price is the same. So it's the $45 flat for that seating fee, as it usually is for brunch. There's no extra a la carte charges. You could ask for, uh, yes, I want the chicken parm and I want the... Um, the lasagna, which I think we both did. And we both rolled out of there after the fact, but at brunch is handled a little bit different than dinner. Um, also, because I was crushed that I couldn't go up to the buffet and just grab like 20 of the strawberry soups, which I was so looking forward to. And it wasn't on the menu. I did ask, I, I asked them if they happen to do the strawberry soup. And they said they can on some days. So if you do have something that you really, really loved from the original brunch, don't hesitate to ask for it. All they can say is, no, I'm sorry, we don't have that. But you might be pleasantly surprised as I was when they brought out two huge strawberry soups, which made me exceptionally happy. They were very accommodating and understanding. Yeah. Like they know what Palo means to people. And he said, look, if there's something on here that you don't ask me and I'll try and get it for you, I'll try and make that happen. And he did. Yeah, absolutely. And on the dinner thing, if you are that that Platinum Castaway Club, you get that $45 um, basically a credit when you go in and use it for Palo dinner. So that $45 goes to your seating fee. If you do want to add additional entrees or whatever from the a la carte me menu, that's where the charges are going to start coming along as, and also for alcohol as well, which I found out too. Um, the other thing is on Remy, they're doing the same thing. So right now they have $125 seating fee for the Remy dinner, which if you remember has the American side and the French side, and you can you get those courses automatically and you can switch between them. So you can pick something from the American side if you're having the French side. So you can still kind of go back and forth between those two menus. However, they also have an a la carte menu as well. So you pay your $125 fee. And if you want to go off of those two American and French, then you're going to pay additional for those a la carte choices. And they also still have the upcharges if you want to add the wine pairing or the champagne pairing. Right. Right. And it again, it, it depends on how you, you know, decide that you look, if you want to do Remy every night, Mazel Tov, like go, you go. Yeah, you, yum. <laughs> Could you imagine? Oh, my gosh. With the wine pairing every night, you'll never remember the vacation you just had. But you'll enjoy it. <laughs> no, but I will tell you, Becky, that I did something on this cruise that I have never done for myself. I've always done for like my kids and stuff. But because I was in the room and and you, my, I did this for you. I finally oh. ordered room service for myself. And you did that for me? No, what? Not you. Not you <laughs> the, the, my friend who's listening. I did it for you. Because room service is so good. The chicken tenders from room service, <laughs> I don't know what they do. Because I did a little comparison and contrasting. I went to Flo's and got chicken tenders from there. And then I ordered chicken tenders from, from room service. Don't judge me. This is research, you know. And Was that after Apollo? Just checking? Yeah, look, <laughs> again, I had a little bit of time to include a lot of food. I had okay. a lot of catching up to do. But if you've never done the tenders, you, you need to do them. Uh, okay, but tell us, are they the same? Or were they? was room service better? Or was Flo's better? Which one wins? Oh, I need to go back and do a video side-by-side <laughs> -side taste test. Halloween on the high seas. I'm looking right at you. Wow. Becky, we'll talk offline. All right. Righty. We have, listen, we have more to get to and not yeah, a lot we of do. to do it. Let's Keep doing go it. go over to entertainment. We went on a three-night sailing on the dream. On the three-night sailing, some of the entertainment was different. So, for example, in the Walt Disney Theater, the only show that was playing was Beauty and the Beast. Twice- um, twice a night for early and late seating. And it also was on the second day. They did this for a number of reasons. One, they obviously need to spread out the number of guests. So now when you arrive at the theater, a crew member will seat you and there is going to be a, a spaces in between per row. There will be, I think they had three seats in between parties, every other row. So certainly there was not as many people inside the theater, um, on the four night cruises, they did have Believe one night. A couple other things to note 
there is no eating in the Walt Disney Theater, meaning right. they, there is no popcorn sales. Moment of silence. However, uh, you could get a beverage. I noticed that one night Preludes was closed, but then I think later on in the night Play- Preludes was open, which is sort of the little bar right outside that normally has popcorn and candy. This time they only did have drinks as well. Um, so that's sort of what the the theater like seating was, and just overall, Becky, in terms of entertainment and offerings that were on board in terms of activities there still were a lot of things going on throughout the day and in the evening we'll talk about characters separately but a lot of the family games some of the things that happened in the clubs in the evening it is definitely was definitely not a full itinerary as compared to pre-covid cruises obviously that is going to come back as the ships get more full and, and some of the distancing will hopefully eventually go away. But there still was a lot to do depending on what you wanted to do. So, for example, we walked over to some of the pub trivia games, the the 80s music trivia. Yeah, we would have six, eight, blown seven. that away. We, know, we totally would have won. Uh, guests I don't know. really knew their stuff. But <laughs> they did not fill every seat in the house. Right. So there were a number of tables that could not be filled. And I was happy to see that it was full, that there was a lot of people who were in there playing, but there was also a lot of space in between. But again, opportunity from adversity, not having as much stuff on the calendar affords you the opportunity to do something that sometimes you don't get to do on a cruise, which is sit back, (laughs) relax. Becky, I will tell you the joy that I had, I was able to sit down and open a book. I know it's still don't believe so it. Stupid. I do not believe I it. Did. I read a book. <laughs> like it was a business book. So it almost counted as work. But I couldn't believe like I had to, I, I'm not very good at relaxing. This this took a lot of effort. shocker. I was having like the shakes as I was doing it. But again, it was almost something like I didn't feel like I had mind you, this is the first cruise we've done ever without a group. So I had no yeah. idea what to do. We didn't know what to do with ourselves. I know at first it was that first day. Remember we were like, should we be, are we supposed to be somewhere? Yeah. Isn't there a meetup? What are we supposed to do? Why are like, we just I think I'm here? supposed to go to the spa. Like I, I have time <laughs> to do it. So, wow. um, but it was, and, and there was a lot to do and there wasn't a lot to do. And again, it, mm-hmm. having less people and less crowds affords you the opportunity to really sort of pick and choose what you wanted. But I totally dig the app picking out the stuff that you want and then getting the notifications or reminders of where to go, or you could be at dinner, you could be in your street room. Hey, what's going on today? And you all have easy access to it right from there. Yeah, that was amazing. And I, I do appreciate the way that they've tried to keep as much of the experience the same as normal or as normal as we can be given the situation. So for them to have um, uh, the Beauty and the Beast show running several times so they could still give that that comfort of social distancing but yet everybody has the chance to see it rather than do the well sorry you weren't here in time so i'm sorry you're skipped wait your next cruise i really appreciated the way they did it and the the cast members are handling it so well um and in the seating process making sure that the uh, the row in front of you and behind you is empty you have at least two or three chairs between you and a, another party uh, I, I really do appreciate the uh, the lengths that they've gone to make sure that they can keep it as magical as they possibly can. Well, and that extends up to where I wanted to go next, which were the pool areas. Right. Um, same thing up on deck 11 because we're on the dream. There were noticeably less lounge chairs spaced out both on the pool deck as well as off on the port and starboard sides looking out over the water. So there was distancing sort of being enforced by virtue of where chairs were we'll get to castaway but like on castaway they asked you not to move any of the lounge chairs because they were specifically placed there for a reason some of the tables had markers on them to skip certain tables and in the pools themselves again this is temporary but where we are now there were stanchions up around the the perimeter of the pool only allowing for one ingress and egress one way in and one way out and each of the pools both the uh, family pool as well as the kid pool only allowed for about 13 to 15 guests at any one time i understood that during certain busier times if ever a line started to form 
they would ask swimmers to sort of stay in for, you know, 10, 15 minutes and then rotate through. I believe the adults pool did not have any of those restrictions. Obviously, there's no lifeguard there. We did see a number of adults in the adult pool by the the Cove Cafe. Uh, Hot tubs were open. You go be you, man. You go do your thing. Uh, We saw a lot of adults enjoying the hot (laughs) tubs, but it was interesting how they were able to, and it didn't seem to be much of a disruptor for guests other than, you know, kids having to wait a couple of minutes. But because the the ship wasn't at full capacity, it, it wasn't really an issue. Yeah, it really wasn't from, like you said, from the capacity side. I, I will say I was a little taken aback at first when we looked at it. It's like, wait a minute, what? They're only letting people in 12 or 13 at a time in each of the pools. But I think we stood there and watched it for quite a while just to watch the process. And it didn't seem to impede anybody. There was never really a line that started forming that, that we saw anyway, and people were enjoying it. There was a cast member there to monitor the situation. And again, they handled it really well. They doing the same thing up on the aqueduct. Uh, they had a, a cast member there that was just kind of making sure that people were, were distancing themselves in line, but it never shut down. It wasn't anything that impeded that fun. Um, the, the thing that did kind of uh, surprise me was during the fireworks were up on the top deck. They do have uh, markers on the ground for each family to stand on and they would do the fireworks show and they do two shows so that early dining and late dining can both experience the, the show, but they have you stand on these specific markers. And at the end of the show, you still have to stand there uh, until a cast member comes and releases you to avoid having people crowded up uh, trying to exit the location. Yeah. And, and sort of, I was going to sort of come full circle in terms of, the deck parties themselves. One, there is no sail away party. Yeah. Insert moment at that. It's just, it is, you miss it. Understandable. It's, yeah. It's call it what you want. It's uh, the rite of passage. It's fun. It's corny. It's, it's the way you kick things off. It's going to come back, right? We know that it's going to come back right now. It's not there. And actually we, I, I, I forgive me. I should have mentioned this earlier. One thing that I did notice Becky was not only was there no sail away party, but you depart port, later which makes sense because you're now boarding guests in sort of scheduled intervals so we were sitting down for early dinner and we were still in port we didn't depart port until about 6 20 6 30 or so which is obviously much much later than the approximate 4 4 30 5 o'clock ish um departing but there is no sail away party um even there while there was a quote-unquote pirate night there were no pirate night fireworks. It's currently called Disney Ever After, which I got to tell you, I kind of dig. It's you know, it, it was pirate. better. Yeah. I, I'm going to say it was actually so much better of a show than the pirate night was. I'm I'm with you. I like the music. I yeah. like the, the the pyro that they did. They much do better. it two nights, twice a night. So that depending on what your seating is or what your schedule is, you don't have to feel like you're potentially going to miss it um we actually sat up on deck one night uh, just you know sat there with a couple of friends we caught it twice we were sitting up by currents and just happened to watch it twice um and was able to hear the music and i loved it yeah i I actually thought it was a much better show and i enjoyed it so much more the the pirate night thing is is great and fun and all that but it was nice to see something new and something fresh loved the music and the pyro was much more robust. Um, I I was impressed by the, uh, being a pyro person myself, I was really impressed with what they did at sea, uh, given that situation. I am not sure that the three night and the four night might have one night versus two nights of that show. I'm not exactly sure. So make sure you check the schedule before you take us at that word, because I'm not sure. Like everything. Everything's changing. Speaking of which, I have breaking news, by the way, really quick. I know but this is all on testing that just came through and it was just official. Um, One of the difficulties about testing has been when you for your kids or you needed to go and find a place to test between one and three days. And that's very difficult in some locations in in Florida. It's pretty simple Um, in other locations. It's easy just to go to a Walgreens and get your test. Other places, it's really, really difficult. So Disney has just. Um, partnered with uh, with the people who did the tests, and they now have 
two, two, three options here. Guests may now use the Safe Passage website to purchase and schedule a pre-trip test to be performed either at MCO at Orlando's airport or at the Radisson Resort at Cape Canaveral. So that's very cool. They also have an option to uh, pre to do, to pre-purchase a home PCR test option that you can do pre-trip. Um, which is done by Inspire Di- Diagnostics and has to be done exactly three days beforehand. And there's a, a home option now. Um, and you can also still test from any ind- independent provider. But the big news is something, a policy they had in place, which was really difficult, is if your child was turning 12 right before sailing or during the time of sailing, your child wouldn't be able to sail because they wouldn't have enough time to get vaccinated. They just came out with a new policy that says guests who turn 12 within five weeks of embarkation are permitted to sail, but will be required to do those same testing protocols, which will include providing that proof of uh, negative COVID-19 test prior to sailing at the guest expense between three and 12 three days and 24 hours beforehand. So that's great news because we had, unfortunately, a lot of families that fell into that that difficult position of their child turning 12 right beforehand and not being able to be vaccinated. So that's great news that Disney has rolled out that policy. So continue on (laughs) with where you were on the happiness. But that's all great news. Becky's original solution of just leave them home just was not cool. Wow. So, but wait, you know one thing that kids and adults love? What's that? There's characters. Yes. And you could not have a Disney cruise without characters. Right. However, it's a little bit different. There are what on the app you will find designated times and locations for what they're currently calling appear and wave, meaning a character or characters will appear behind stanchions. You can wave. You can take distance photos. They don't necessarily tell you what character is going to be where, so you no longer have, remember the atrium sometimes, lines. Lines everywhere because there were characters. Becky, there was a time, and I have photos, and I posted it on Instagram and on Facebook, there's me in the atrium, Mm -hmm. Mickey, Minnie, a crew member, and nobody else. Nobody else. Nobody. (laughs) No. And I'm screaming, do you people not see Mickey? It was crazy, and it was wonderful all at the same time. Because you didn't know what character was going to come out, but I spoke to some of the crew members. There's a huge, and I, and I don't want to say specific, but there's a huge roster of characters, including some that I've never seen on Cruise Line before, that come out throughout the day and night. So you don't have to worry about blocking off a huge amount of time to wait in line because the lines don't exist anymore. But characters are there, and they actually do visit, uh, they did visit Enchanted Garden. One night they did this distanced, small, sort of mini cavalcade parade yeah. through. So it, is it the same thing as what you normally got in places like Animator's Palette? No, but I was happy to see that at least one night the characters did appear during the meal. Yeah, it was one of those neat little surprise and delights where the music just starts up and all of a sudden you get the Fab Five running running through the, the restaurant and doing a little dance. And it was, and some of the cast members too, they they actually had better moves than the Fab Five. <laughs> um, but that was a lot of fun. And you just have to remember that the hard part for me was I was facing the wrong way and they, were, they tell you not to get out of your chair. So I'm a rule follower and I was sitting there going, I need to get out of my chair to see, but I can't turn my chair. Um, but I finally broke a rule and so I can enjoy it too but they they at least do like you said that that appear and wave they they kind of a cavalcade that goes right past you and it, it really did make the night a little bit more magical a couple of things i want to touch on quickly one of which is shopping because i know how important shopping is if you need jewelry that's not a problem <laughs> jewelry diamonds <laughs> diamonds everywhere so there are and we on the dream there are a couple of changes so Tiffany and Company, which had occupied a space on deck five, is now Carriage Jewelers. It looks the same. They even have that same Tiffany blue entrance, but it is now operated by Diamonds International, who, by the way, also has taken over one of the entire shopping venues down on deck three. You might remember, I don't remember if it's... White Caps or Mickey's Mainsail had a small section of fine jewelry and watches. One of the entire three stores, there's Mickey's Mainsail, 
Sea Treasures, and White Caps. One of those three is now completely overtaken by fine jewelry. There's a smaller section now that has some of the Dooney and Burks and perfumes and colognes. And we spent a lot of time sort of sitting there, Becky, thinking <laughs> about it and talking about it. And while, listen, as a frequent cruiser, I, I my days of going to Diamonds International and buying handfuls of Tanzanite are long over. <laughs> However, I, I get it. And here's what I think the, the logic and the reasoning is. And if you do want to shop for jewelry when you go on a cruise, there's a huge advantage here. And what I mean by that is this. Part of the cruising experience is getting off, going into places like Nassau, Grand Cayman, and knowing that if you hunt and search and negotiate hard enough, you can find some good deals on jewelry. Caveat emptor, buyer beware. <laughs> and I, I say that seriously yeah, because some of the right. locations, you know, it, it is not always the most Disney-like experience. There's a lot of people trying to... I don't want to say hustle you, but there are vendors on the street. And even if you walk into what appears to be a reputable jewelry store, you don't know what you're getting. Are you paying the right amount of prices? I think what this does, Becky, is it says, look, if you are looking to get tax-free jewelry, high-end watches, whatever it might, even, you know, not, you don't need necessarily diamond jewelry. There's a wide variety of gold and silver. But if you want to get fine jewelry, Instead of you having to go off and good luck, we'll give you a presentation on showing you where to go. But rather than you going off and spending part of your day hunting and searching and negotiating, we're going to bring that experience to you. Diamonds International is a very well-known, very, they have a shop in Disney Springs. They will bring the experience to you minus all of the ancillary cool stuff. That comes with it. If you've gotten off in Nassau, you know exactly what I'm talking yeah. about. It's not always the most comfortable, family-friendly experience. So while it might not be for me or for you or you, listener, because you wish that there was more of the Disney merch in there, you can still get it on the locations. But I understand the purpose that it potentially serves and the, the, the benefit it is for guests who are looking for that kind of merchandise. I, I get it. And I, I, I totally agree with everything you just said, but that's a lot that's of a lot space of for a lot of jewelry. And, and I think it'll and change. I, I think it'll eventually change. I hope but. so. Cause for me, it just, I, I don't know from a, from a Disney branding pr perspective, it just didn't hit me right. It was like, this is a lot of space that could be used yeah. for something much more uh, experiential. It, it, if they don't want to sell you something, then use that space to sell me something else that's going to be part of an experience rather than here we have two floors of diamond jewelry. Yeah. So hopefully that's going change. to be, I do. I think it's going to be temporary because yeah. of just where we are and because the ship does not stop in Nassau. So yeah, especially right now, partly right. So if you do want to get jewelry and get at a, at a good price, it's sort of been pre-screened for you by Disney on board and gives you an option that you currently don't have. I have to believe in my little heart of hearts <laughs> that when things go back to quote unquote normal and we do start porting it at different locations again, I believe that location will likely switch over to something else. Yeah, I, I think one jewelry store is enough. I, I, I just don't think we need two. <laughs> that's that's just my feeling. I'm sure there's somebody screaming at the phone going, finally, more jewelry. <laughs> um, all right. Yeah, I want to I want to hit a couple of other things very, very quickly. Um, if you are traveling with children, a couple of things to note. The clubs are open. The Oceaneers Club, the Oceaneers Lab are open. The nursery is not. Right. Currently, currently, as of the date of this recording, the nursery is not. The clubs, like everything else, do take a limited number of children in at a time um, and, and find out you, you will be able to find out when you embark exactly what those numbers are. I did walk by a couple of times just to see from a distance what they were doing. And they sort of would move the kids in very small groups from location to location. So they were not sort of just climbing all over. And, you know, Becky's probably like, they're drooling on each other. No, that like they are sort of, <laughs> that's not what kids do. Ew. But they are <laughs> keeping the kids distanced, you know, um, um, the hand washing stations and all the things that existed before they really are even fostering for the kids like continuous hand washing and, and things like that. But if you right. do have little, little teeny tiny ones, 
the nursery, the small world nursery is currently not operating. Exactly. And I did speak to uh, the manager of the the kids clubs just to get a little bit more detail about how they're handling it. Uh, You must reserve a session. So a session is 90 minutes and that can be done through the app. That can be done by by visiting location um, or calling down to them. But you have to reserve it. You can't just show up with your kids and, and drop them off any longer. You reserve the session again, 90 minutes. If you need to do two in a row, say you're doing a um, some mommy daddy time and you're going to go have a beverage and then go have dinner together. It's really important for you to probably not be limited to 90 minutes. There is a way that you can do back to back sessions, but you are not able to do that on the app. You actually need to, when you go down for the second session or, or you need to go talk to them because the app doesn't allow you to do back to back sessions. It has a, a 15 minute interval between the two. So it's not something you do automatically. You actually have to do it in person. One of the things I want to mention is not what is on the ship, but is what is off the ship. And again, opportunity from adversity. We were on a three-night cruise with not one, but two stops in Woo-hoo! Castaway Key. I would have paid great. extras for that. I know. A couple of things to notice, to, to note about visiting Castaway. You do have uh, disembarkation times, so there is not these crowds of people what you can do though is you go to to breakfast you join the virtual queue you get a notification and then as you're done you're able to move down onto the gangway and off onto castaway masks are required currently in certain locations so if you go to cookies or cookies to barbecue there are uh, you do need to put your mask on your face covering on while you are in the line Uh, obviously the each of the little buffet bays are limited to one party at a time. So you're not sort of crowding around. You are obviously being uh, served. The same thing holds true for Serenity Bay. There is a crew member there sort of keeping the line um, distanced and one party at a time. So there's not a crowd of people waiting to get their food or pick up their cutlery or get a drink, whatever it might be. Elsewhere on the island, which was wonderfully and noticeably very empty. Um, The lounge chairs on the beach are also distanced. They ask that you do not move them. If if you have a party that you want to sort of bring more chairs together, there are uh, cast members and crew members everywhere. Um, Wow. The the crew member to guest ratio was still very, very Very high. high. Like I felt there was like six people dedicated just to us, which is great. Um, and currently, and just, go ahead. I was going to say with the chair situation, I did run into a, one of those scenarios where I'm like, oh, really? And that was on Serenity Bay where they have these wonderful chairs that you can pull down into the water and just sit in, in the water and, and uh, you know, have that the back for your chair. But unfortunately, they will not allow us to move those chairs. So while it's a disappointment, it's temporary. And again, if you know it beforehand, you won't be as disappointed because you'll have that appropriate level of expectation. Yeah. Um, and At the time we were sailing, a number of third-party excursions had been canceled. I I think it was probably just because of the time of when we went. Somebody else had said that they cruised recently and those third-party excursions were back on. You'll be able to log into the Port Adventures via your app or before you board the ship to see exactly what is available or not. But I will tell you, Becky, it was very, very nice (laughs) <laughs> Very relax. Dare I say, dare, dare, relaxing on Castaway with not a lot of people there, and we sort of took our time. I, again, my it was first crazy. Time, my first time ever eating at Serenity Bay. No, because, congratulations! Because Becky's Finally. like, I am not eating by those children if I don't. Have I did this. not so say Serenity. that. You yelled. I said no. I it's said there's fine. steak. There's steak there. Remember, <laughs> there's steak. There's other things back. you've never eaten there. I, I did go back and I and I spent a little bit of time and and it was very very, um, it was very very nice and I didn't feel like any part of the castaway experience was depleted at all in fact having less people has its advantages I mean, it really it does, does. That's, that's sort of it really does. Spade spade. it has its advantages so that yeah. too 
and a lot of people may not understand that or, or may not know that they also are doing still doing characters there too. So they've got the characters that come rolling out and kind of a surprise and delight cavalcade, a, a castaway key cavalcade kind of comes by here and there. And one thing was really fun. I should mention about the trams. When you do get to the trams, they are seating only one per party per row and they're seating every other row. So it may look like there's going to be a big line to wait to, uh, for a tram, but don't worry. They have frequent trams coming. So we didn't, we probably waited at the most seven to 10 minutes before we were, and we were at the very back of the line when, when we got off. Um, when you do the, um, oh, the tram really quick. Oh my gosh. As we were coming into the second stop, cause we we're going to transfer to Serenity Bay, the tram turned a corner and there was stitch. And there was a beatbox and he was like dancing just around the corner, not a place that that uh, guests would normally find him in. But it was really fun to go. Oh, my gosh, there's did Stitch just, in that. Did you I did. Did you call him a beatbox? I did. I did. I did. Because something's got to make you laugh today. And that did it. Mission accomplished. Oh, boy. I win. Becky and the beatbox. <laughs> Okey-dokey. He did. There he was go. beating on the box. It was really funny. Oh, I'm just going to so let anyway, that sit there for a minute. Please um, do. So- and my other tip, too, besides, by the way, uh, Serenity Bay was much more um, capacity. There's a lot more people there. We went to the family beach. You could find beach chairs yeah. anywhere you looked, which was actually kind of perfect. But my tip, though, is don't wait to the last minute to get your uh, your disembarkation time on the app. So right when we sat down for breakfast, I said, hey, let's get our time. It did have to wait about an hour. So it was perfect timing. We sat down for breakfast. We got our, our time, ate breakfast, and then walked right off the ship. And speaking of disembarkation, all good things must come to an end, including your cruise. Same thing for the disembarkation process. Um, Very, very simple, very smooth. We chose to have a a later disembarkation. So we went, we had a full breakfast at Enchanted Garden and uh, disembarked from there. Very, very simple, um, very easy getting your bag because there was a lot less people on board and and certainly enough time had passed. Um, I think the process disembarking was as easy and as simple and obviously less crowded as, as always, um, and I think that sort of goes to the overall point. There are some things that have changed. Um, there are things that I expect to eventually go back to the way they were, possibly with some improvements, dining, buffets, capacity, certainly entertainment. Um, but by the same token, Becky, there are things we experienced in August 2021 that I hope and that I expect will stay and will continue to improve. I hope and believe that the pre-cruise process was as remains as simple and as painless. The boarding was a delight. Like mm-hmm. it was a surprise and delight. It was like, I can't, 25 minutes. I was like, I can't believe we're on board. Like well, I'm eating yeah. in like 30 minutes, which for me, Yahtzee, it was a win. <laughs> the mustard drill, super, super well done. Uh, and I honestly think, Becky, that there's going to be continued enhancements. So for example, one of the things that I thought about and I expect to happen, and this is just, this is pure speculation based on not just the current protocols for things like getting into specifically the Walt Disney theater. I think that going forward at some point when we do reach full capacity, it makes perfect sense, especially with the technology built into the app to have a movie theater like experience, which means now you're no longer being like, hey, we got to hurry up, eat our dinner, forego dessert, get out there and get online because we want to get a good seat for the theater. I imagine you're going to use your app to choose your seats ahead of time. You'll yeah. be assigned a seat. And then when it's your time to go, you show it to a crew member. You'll either go down to it or they will escort you to your seat to even make for a more pleasant, faster, easier process. Yeah, absolutely. Take advantage of the technology that, that we have. And as long as it works, that's that's the big plus. We did see that app. We saw it work in every aspect that we needed to use it with. B- being able to chat with people was just so in- wonderful. And I hope that they, uh, I hope others, I hope other type of, of, of travel suppliers provide this easy access to getting information so you don't have to interrupt your your vacation experience. I love that. There was a lot more that I found 
more efficient and ultimately more enjoyable. I mean, there were things that even taking, you know, post-pandemic cruising out of the equation, just some of those things, not having to wait for guest services, having access to a full navigator on the app, having access to the menus, having access to crew members, these surprise and delight moments. There's a lot of things. I think there are, there are uh, opportunities and I think there's some advantages or there were some lessons that are learned that they will be able to continue going forward. Yeah. And the really good news for me is that we now know that all four ships are scheduled to sail. There's no more wondering if any of the ships are coming back. The magic's already been in service and she's heading back to the U S to start four and five nights out of Miami on October 28th. The dream of course is doing what, which we were on started on August 9th and they're doing the three and four nights Bahamas. The fantasy is coming back um, for four nights Bahamas, which it already has. And it's resuming seven days on October 9th. And the wonder, which we were wondering, wondering about the wonder, uh, October 1st is doing four night sailings out of San Diego and it returns via the Panama Canal November 5th. So we know they're all coming back and coming back to service. The crews are amazing. They are just as excited to see us as we were to be on board the ship. It's wonderful to have um, everybody back and, and inching back to normal. And the other thing, too, that, that I felt very comfortable about, and again, I know the whole vaccinated versus not is, is um, for a discussion for another time. But for me, knowing how bad the cruise industry takes hits over being a Petri dish, et cetera, when in fact, that's really not the case if you look at its studies. Um, but if you do, if you are nervous about taking a vacation, when you know that everybody on board has been vaccinated and tested right before you get on board the ship, you know that there's nobody on board that, that carries the virus. So you can have that moment of relaxing, breathing, sitting back, relaxing and having a vacation you can enjoy. And I want to sort of punctuate the conversation by, by making two points. One, and I'm specifically saving this for last, the crew members individually and collectively were exceptional. Absolutely. You could tell how excited they were to be back with guests again. To that point, and as an extension of that, I have to say, and, and you know, you, we cannot overstate this, much like Disney World, I understand the, the potential concern about getting on board a ship. The crew members and the guests, everyone did their part, not just beforehand, but on board inside people are like, oh, I'm not going to wear my mask inside. You forget it. You do. You do. You sort of you very, very easily forget it. You don't mind it. One, because you're so happy to be back on board. Correct. Air conditioned inside, which is really, <laughs> really nice. But I will say, and, and in no uncertain terms, I felt so incredibly not just safe, but comfortable while I was on board. I never felt that any of the protocols, the masks, anything that was going on took away from the experience at right. all. And I say that, and now you have to judge for yourself, but it's why we're having this conversation it's why I showed it to you live so that you can judge for yourself. But for me, Lou Mangello, guest on board who just loves cruising, I was just so happy to be back. I felt safe and I always felt comfortable. Yeah, I, I did too. Like like I said, I, when you and I sailed, I was a little less just because I didn't know that because at that point we knew that vaccinated people could be carrying the virus and not everybody was tested. However, I'm really happy to say that they have changed that. They are doing the right thing, which is, you know, the Disney way of, of making sure that safety is number one. And they've made that change, which is absolutely in incredible. But I'm hoping that um, I, I'm with you. I'm going to go back. I I'm with you that it wearing a mask didn't take anything away from it whatsoever. After wearing a mask for as long as we have, and in the state that I'm in, we're still wearing masks everywhere we go. Um, it didn't take away from the experience whatsoever. And the, just to reiterate what you said, the crew members, the cast are amazing. I have had more people smiling and saying, welcome back. And it's so good to have you here 
again, they were more excited, I think, than we were to be there. And we were really excited to be there. (laughs) So that tells you exactly how it felt. I had more conversations, one-on-one conversations with cast members on this sailing than I've ever had before. Um, Talking about where did they go during that time? What happened? Are their families okay? I mean, just having these wonderful conversations and getting to know them on a one-on-one basis, it really kind of made the the experience even even better. Yeah. And the the idea of, of doing the show is so that you could hear and understand exactly what it was like. I would love for you to think about it, digest it. Becky, what I think we should do is on one of the Wednesday night uh, WW Radio live shows on Facebook, we will I will bring you on board. <gasps> no way, really? Calm down. I might change my mind. I, <laughs> oh my I'll, gosh, I'll I'm excited now. <laughs> and we'll take questions live. So yeah. if you have specific questions about any aspect of the cruise experience, yeah. what, we, what we're doing, what might be next. We'll be able to take and those live. I will announce it both on social and on a future show. Also, don't forget that if you are ready to come cruise again, I promise you the only make thing that makes cruising better is cruising as a group. And if you've never done it before, we've got not one, not two, but count them, three Woo-hoo! WW Radio group cruises in 2022. February 5th, out of Miami, on the Disney Magic for, yay, Marvel Day at Sea. We yay. have an inaugural cruise Thor. on the Disney <laughs> Wish. Calm down over there. <laughs> on the Disney Wish, June 20th. And we're going to do another cruise on the Disney Wish, December 5th, for a very merry time cruise. If you go to www.radio.com, click on the events page, that will take you to where you can find out more information and get a free, no obligation quote and have any questions that you want answered from Becky Mankin and the team over at Mouse Fan Travel because you do need to book through Mouse Fan Travel in order to be part of the group. Becky Mankin from the aforesaid Mouse Fan Travel, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for making this cruise possible. Thank you for making it fun. Thank you for joining me today. And I look so very forward having done this to all of the cruises that we get to do as a family, as a community together next year. You're just looking forward to the chicken nuggets. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> chicken tenders. Nu- tenders. Sorry, tenders. the chicken tenders. nuggets. Thank, thank you for having me. Thank you for doing this with me. Thank you for we had such fun um, coming together and actually doing a cruise without a group, which was fantastic. And I, I really appreciated the brunch. Yeah, I thank you for ordering the ten desserts so that I didn't have to. Um, it was so nice of you to make sure that we had one of everything so I could taste everything. He even let me eat. Have have a taste of every single thing, uh, which is unheard of because he doesn't share food. So I was really amazed at that. So I appreciate it. Listen, it is just so good to be back <laughs> at sea it is. once again. And it again is. If you have any questions about cruising, coming to World or Land, you can go and visit mousefantravel.com. Becky, if you can get back on board any one ship and eat any one thing, what would it be? Ooh. Oh, d- d- is there one that any one ship? Oh. Okay, I've got other ideas about that. But uh, I would say uh, the Disney Wonder. I would want to go back on the Disney Wonder. I want to go back to Alaska on the Disney Wonder. I want to go have hollow brunch on the Disney Wonder. That, If I could go back right now, that's where I'd be. Yeah, I do love that show. Anyway, Justin, Tiana. time for our Walt Disney World Trivia Question of the Week, where I invite you to test your knowledge of Walt Disney World history or see how well you pay attention to the details and what you see, hear, remember, or even taste. If you think you know the answer, you can enter for a chance to win a Disney prize package. And this week's trivia contest is once again brought to you by you, because as part of the WW Radio Nation, you literally help bring every episode of WW Radio to life Every live broadcast from the parks, the contests, giveaways, they are all thanks to, because of, and for you. And you can find out how you can help the show for as little as $1 per month and get exclusive rewards every month like scavenger hunts, trivia quests, group video calls, access to our private Facebook group, shirts, stickers, monthly care packages, early access to events and discounts, and much, much more. 
You can find out more by visiting www.radio.com slash support. Now, before we get to this week's question, we're going to go back, review last week's, and select our winner. So last week, I asked you to simply identify who says this phrase. Welcome to our little trans-dimensional joyride, folks. If you didn't get it, or are still not sure, let me give you a little more. Hello there. Welcome to our little trans-dimensional joyride, folks. I'm Dr. Seeker, your friendly controller and a heck of a paleontologist, if I do say so myself. Obviously, it is from Dinosaur, and as he said, it is from Dr. Seeker. Congratulations, thank you if you got this one correct. Last week you were playing for a WW Radio pin and keychain, as well as a little bonus surprise as well. And last week's winner, randomly selected, is Steve Lawson. So Steve, congratulations. I will get your prize package out to you right away. If you played last week and didn't win, that's okay, because here's your next chance to enter in this week's Walt Disney World Trivia Challenge. This week, we're going to go from the parks to the springs, which, in my opinion, is sort of like the fifth theme park. And simply tell me this week, what Disney Springs restaurant is in the former location of the Adventurers Club? Oh, how I miss you so. You have until Sunday, September 19th, at 11.59 p.m. Eastern to go to www.radio.com, click on this week's podcast, use the form there. Again, you're going to play for the pin, the keychain, and a bonus mystery prize. Also, don't forget to stay tuned to my Instagram at instagram.com slash lumangelo for another giveaway, no trivia knowledge required. So good luck and have fun. That's going to do it for this week's show. Thank you so much for taking the time to tune in this and every week. If you have any questions about cruising on Disney Cruise Line or an upcoming cruise you're about to take, you can go to the WW Radio Clubhouse, which is our fun, friendly, family-friendly group over on Facebook at www.radio.com slash clubhouse. Also stay tuned to an upcoming WW Radio Live every Wednesday, 7.30 p.m. Eastern, as we'll talk, as I said, by having Becky come on, answer your questions about cruising on Disney Cruise Line. And also stay tuned as I'm going to have some special guests joining me over the next few weeks. And speaking of live broadcasts, please don't forget to join me live from Magic Kingdom on October 1st for Walt Disney World's 50th anniversary. I'll also likely be going live in the two days or so prior. And we also are going to do a meet of the month in Magic Kingdom on October 1st. I'm just waiting until we get a little bit closer, waiting until we find out exactly what Disney may or may not have planned for a schedule that day. The best way to find out when and where is by turning on notifications on both our Facebook page at facebook.com slash WW Radio. And again, turning on notifications in the clubhouse as well. I'm also going to be live from New York Comic Con, my first time ever. So excited. October 7th through the 10th. And as always, I'll be sharing stories on my Instagram and instagram.com slash Lumangelo as well as at wdwradiolive.com over on Facebook. You can also connect with me on social. I'm at Lumangelo on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, and Pinterest. If you have a question you'd like me to answer on the show, you can email me, lou at www.radio.com or call the voicemail at 407-900-9391. That's 407-900-WW1. Be heard on the air and share a question, a comment, or just a hello from the parks. If you are enjoying Marvel's What If over on Disney+, Plus, please come and join our spoiler support group at www.radio.com slash spoilers as we discuss everything happening in What If as well as in the Disney, Marvel, and Star Wars universe. I also want to say special, huge thanks to all of the members of the WW Radio Nation family. I sincerely appreciate your love, support, friendship, and help, and I love being able to give back to you each and every month. I want to thank some new and longtime members of the Nation family, including John Conlon, Kelsey Ayers, and Angela Batista. Again, to find out more, how you can not only help the show, but don't forget that a portion of your contribution does go to our Dream Team project to benefit the Make-A-Wish Foundation of America. And thanks to you, we've raised more than $450,000 for Make-A-Wish. Again, just go to www.radio.com slash support. And if you'd like to learn how to turn what you love into what you do, build your brand or business and take things to the next level. I invite you to be part of my Momentum Weekend Workshop in Walt Disney World, November 13th and 14th. It is a one-room, two-day, 50-person event with an optional Mastermind Day for just 10 people on Monday. There are now only nine spots remaining for the workshop and three spots remaining for the Monday Mastermind. And if you're still deciding if Momentum is right for you, I want to give you a little bit more information about some of the sessions that are going to include 
the Sorcerer's Workshop, which is where I'm going to spend time showing how you can apply lessons from the Disney parks into your business, whatever business you might be in. We're going to cover email marketing, productivity, time management, content repurposing, building community, making your impossible goals possible, and helping to overcome some of those entrepreneurial struggles, audio, video, live, tools, networking, support stations, the future of social, fireside chat, and a lot more. I've also extended the $100 off early bird discount for another couple of weeks. To find out more, you can visit lumangelo.com slash momentum. And of course, as I said earlier, this show is by, for, with, and about you. And all I ask is that if you like the show, please help spread the word. Tell a friend, share a link to this or your favorite episode over on social. And if you can, take just a couple of seconds to rate and review the show over an Apple podcast. It is so incredibly helpful. Very much appreciated. I want to thank some recent reviewers like S. Donnelly 14, who simply says, joy. It just brings the joy at Lou and guests and Becky and Tim. Thank you so much for bringing the magic. And Irish Dancer says, gotta love Lou. The, so much, the show is so much fun. Bringing the Disney love no matter where you are. Lou is a ray of Disney sunshine, whether you're planning a trip, learning about history, or just adding some magic to your day. Warning, don't listen to Hungry. Irish Dancer and S. Donnelly, thank you very much again. Just search for WW Radio and Apple Podcasts or go to www.radio.com slash iTunes. It'll show you exactly how and where to do it. Finally, most importantly, thank you, thank you, thank you. I love and appreciate you so, so very much. And I mean that from the bottom of my heart. And I hope that the show has helped make your day and your week happier. And that I hope you always remember to choose the good. It is up to you to look for and find the good in everything and everyone that you encounter. And I promise that will not only make you happier, but that positivity is contagious. So choose the good, be the good, and have your best week ever. And if there's ever anything I can do for you, please just reach out and let me know. I love you. I appreciate you. So until next time, see ya. Hi, Lou. Uh, this is Joe in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and I just was listening to your podcast about your favorite art at Walt Disney World, and it suddenly hit me uh, remembering our most recent trip uh, that we needed to stop by the Welcome Center at Disney Springs uh, to get some things worked out on our tickets. And while we were there, uh, inside waiting on our turn, I noticed the artwork that's inside that welcome center. Uh, there are paintings and photographs. Uh, a lot of the paintings looks like they're imaginations of what the Disney Springs area was looking like when it was first imagined, uh, when that community was first built and things like that. So it's, there's pictures of paddle boats and there's um, airplanes that land on water and things like that. And I just remembered walking around and looking at those, uh, not only because we were waiting our turn, but it rained like crazy while we were in there, and they graciously let us stay <laughs> and uh, wait for the rain to stop before we uh, went about our way and our day there. So anyway, if you have never been in the Welcome Center at Disney Springs and looked at the art inside, we really enjoyed it. Enjoy your show, Lou. Thanks. Thanks.